All right, welcome everyone. Uh, the Urban Forestry Commission uh, meeting March 2nd, 2022. Um, we have a lot of ground to cover today. Uh, just two quick announcements. Marilyn and Rob will not be present today, but we do have a quorum to continue moving with the meeting. Um, I would like to recognize uh, two members of the public. Um, Lily Lombard, as I don't think needs any introduction from me, um, being the former chair of this commission and a tree advocate and Northampton resident. And um, Henry Lappin from Amherst. Uh, Welcome, Henry. Who, who's going to give us uh, a presentation. Thank you. Hen uh, Henry, I budgeted you 15 minutes. I don't know if that's enough uh, for you, but. Um, yeah, that should be fine. I just want to talk briefly about what we're doing on a statewide level and okay. get Perfect. some support. Uh, we, we love to, we love to hear from you. And at some point in time, we would like to have some kind of a joint meeting between the two commissions. Mm. Um, unlike, uh, like a, unlike a Turkey day football game, but two commissions that actually work together for a common goal. <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, so either one of you had any public comment at the moment? No. Okay. Uh, well, yes. I, I might as well, I, I guess, you know, I'm not on the agenda, so I, I'm, I might as well use this time during public comment to make a few comments. Is that okay, Rich? Yeah, oh yeah, please do. Okay, yeah. good. Good to see everybody, Henry. Always good to see, you know, uh, one of the original inspirations for where Northampton um, grew. Um, or from where Northampton grew. Um, and uh, I, I just, I've always found you a great educator as well, Henry. So um, I'm glad to hear that you're, you're continuing to educate um, the commission. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I wanted to share a few comments. Um, as everybody knows, I am a member of a, of a, a sort of consortium of stakeholders concerned about the Main Street redesign in Northampton called Main Street for Everyone. And I briefed the commission before on our work and our vision and where we think that the um, redesign needs improvement. I wanted to give you a little bit of an update to say that we continue to track closely the redesign um, we, we got um, per our request of the planning department, a, um, a meeting with the design team to get a, a little peek into what the 25% design was that they submitted to the mass DOT. And um, we were pleased to see because prior to that, we had had another private meeting in which we presented some very specific recommendations for improving the design and including in ways that would accommodate more trees. So I am pleased to report that some of those things were um, incorporated into the redesign, specifically making space um, at the intersection of Strong and Main for more trees in an area where they did not um, have enough space for trees. So that was exciting to see. N lots of what we recommended did not um, get folded into the design, no surprise there, but um, one of the one areas where we have most hung our advocacy hat, which was the removal of angle parking, except for mm. angle parking required for, um, for people needing accessible parking. Um, you know, we had, we had had been strongly advocating and continue to for the removal of, of non-accessible angle parking. Some of that was removed, some still remains in the design. And I wanna remind everyone that that has a disproportionate impact on the width of the street and therefore the space for trees and the closeness that trees can get to that center of the street to create that really broad canopy that we all should be shooting for with this one crack at federal funds um, to prepare us for the 21st century and a time of great um, you know, climate change to have um, broad spreading trees over this uh, street is just a critical thing. So we're, we're gonna continue to, to advocate for that. And we would love to see the Urban Forestry Commission can, um, you know, be really forceful in that way too. Um, I also understand that uh, Rich and or the Urban Forestry Commission made some um, recommendations regarding tree species. I'd love to hear wh um, what that was. 
Um, so curious to hear from Rich and or the commission on that. And, and okay, so that's the Main Street redesign. Um, I wanted to also let you know, I've had a conversation with Wayne Fiden and learned as you, you all may know that there, uh, that there is a, some uh, reconstruction project, a, a smaller scale reconstruction project in downtown Florence along Main Street that does involve the potential installation of a few trees using structural soil. And that one of the property um, owners that, that, is, that would have, um, some of the right public right of way that he has been enjoying up to now at, as parking um, removed for the installation of a large shade tree. And he is um, objecting to that. And that, that business owner is the owner of Florence Dental um, on Main Street. I think it's the corner of Rich, is it like Warner or um, Warfield? No, it's not, definitely not Warfield. No. Anyway. Yes. Rich, do you remember what that intersection is? You're muted, Rich. Yeah, I recognize that. Thank you. Uh, Wilder Place. Wilder. Okay, Wilder. Wilder. Yeah. I knew it started with a W. Yeah. So um, I, you know, I think that this is a case where individual citizens, um, especially those who happen to be clients of Florence Dental, but certainly any individual citizens can reach out to that business and let them know that you support having um, a tree there. It would only involve the loss of one parking spot mm. for them. And it would um, be the gain of so much public benefit in the way of a really strategically placed shade tree at an intersection where there is no shade. Um, and then I, um, uh, I wanted to acknowledge that I know that you're going to be discussing the significant tree ordinance and or a, a broader issue of a universal uh, tree protection ordinance. And I wanted to support that conversation and um, urge you to recognize the strong public support for tree protection in this town that could be rallied um, to uh, go for uh, the strongest possible protection that even stronger than you may think is possible. Um, I just had a conversation with one counselor um, there th with the sea change of city councilors this um, past election season. I think that there is appetite for legislative um, drafting in the council, whereas I think that's not been something that they've historically really um, seen themselves as being active in. And so I feel like this, you know, the time is ripe for um, um, a bolder uh, tree protection ordinance than you may think is possible. So um, I, I, I encourage that and I encourage you to do the research about other precedents that will give um, credibility to whatever, um, you know, bold ordinance that we put forward. And I am personally going to be working um, on that issue um, especially with some targeted counselors. Um, and then finally, I wanted to bring to your attention that video recordings of these meetings have not been posted since July of 2021 on Northampton Open Media. And I'm hoping that you all can remedy that because it is really valuable to be, go, to be able to go back and watch meetings that you were not able to attend live and minutes of a meeting don't capture the conversation the way a recording does. Okay, thanks Thanks for that well more than three minutes of public comment. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Um, I, I sent, I, moving on to the minutes, I sent the minutes out to everyone earlier this afternoon. Um, let me just check my time here. I just wanna make sure. Henry, do you have to leave? Are you having to leave? We're going to be a little off by a few minutes, but we. A few minutes is fine. Um, I really got to get out and um, collect sap before it gets dark. That's all. So if I if I would uh, be able to just uh, suggest that we take Henry's presentation out of order. Yeah. Um, I don't think we need a motion for that. That way, there we can review the minutes after Henry's presentation is over. So Henry, you have the floor, and and again, welcome. We appreciate uh, we appreciate you coming. It's nice to see you. Yeah, thanks. It's always a pleasure to join with you guys too. Um, and it's impressive to hear, Lily, that you're still involved with trees, even though you're not on the committee, and that you guys are doing, you know, significant tree ordinance, all the stuff that we're trying to do. And 
it seems hopeless right now in Amherst. Um, we just lost a, a move to try to uh, have a moratorium on solar, large scale solar things. And it looks like Coles is going to put in a big solar place on forest land in Amherst, mm -hmm. besides the forest that they're taking in Shootsbury and everywhere else. So, um, yeah, the main thing I want to talk about is um, I've been uh, I've been frustrated with a lot of things that we can't do on a town level. So I've reached out to uh, Joe Cumberford and Mindy Dom, who's our um, representative. Uh, the three main things are an update to Chapter 87 which you guys are probably familiar with. Um, so, I mean, the chapter 87 is 100 years old and it, it talks about horses killing trees, but not trucks running into trees. So um, that was going to pass right before COVID hit and then it got put on the back burner and uh, there's still a bill now. So I think a little bit of pressure. I mean, Joe's totally in support of it and uh, Mindy also, but a little more pressure from other groups would help. Um, the bigger one for us, oh, go ahead, yes. You're muted, though. Where can we find the text, Henry? So can, we can uh, be up um, informed about what you're working on there with Chapter 87. I'll try to um, grab it and put it in the chat before I leave. But if you look I'd up I'd be state, happy to support you. Um, I'd want to have a little something to put my teeth in. Too. Yeah. So if you look up the uh, Mass Tree Wardens Association, they're behind the move to update Chapter 87. Um, that's but i'll try to get the information in the in the chat before i leave okay um, i can look there that's no okay. trouble yeah um the other two issues well one is solar farms which i mentioned briefly um right now coles is you know gets a lot of green energy credits and get a lot of money to uh from the state to put in solar farms even if they're destroying forests to do that so mm -hmm. we're trying to push to get that law changed so farmland and forest land you know has some value beyond just cutting it down for industrial solar, you know, and then it's a fine balance because we do so totally support solar and we need solar, but um, we, we can't be, we can't be cutting down forests for that. So, um, and then the third thing is the complete streets program, which is another great program. I mean, it's like put in bike lanes, put in pedestrian access, put in, you know, parking for buses and things, but our streets aren't wide enough to include that with trees and trees are not in our complete streets program. It's mentioned briefly, you know, something about landscaping, but it's very brief and, it, you know, they're doing a project on Northampton Road, which is Route 9 coming up the hill into Amherst and we lost a lot of trees because we had to put in, it was getting funded by the states, so we had to get bike lanes, we had to get this and that and uh, so we're really working to update the complete streets program to make it a green streets program. So I don't have any great solutions, but um, just talking with Joe and Mindy and talking to you guys and uh, trying to get more of a groundswell behind that. So um, that's mostly what I wanted to present. And then whatever you have, you know, happy to answer questions or discuss. Henry, just a question about the the, uh, the solar issue. What 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 have you done? Have you guys written any letters? Uh, to uh, to anyone uh, to other than like Joe Comerford or Mindy Dom regarding the solar um, the solar overall solar issues and the fact that the, you know the ins there's no incentive really to take solar and put it where it really truly belongs, which is on rooftops and top of parking garages, et cetera, versus uh, the cheapest solar setup is to do exactly what you folks are trying to fight against, and we had the same situation here in Northampton, um, which this commission, uh, prior to me being chair, when Lily was chair, we worked on, or the, the commission worked on a solar, um, large ground mounted solar array uh, ordinance. Um, what kind of advocacy have you done and how can we help support that if you, at, at well, a state level? Yeah, um, I, I think really the issue is, you know, for all of us to be corresponding with, um, Who's your secretary, or your representative, I mean, is it Mindy or is it someone else? Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay, 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 Lindsay. Yeah. So, you know, reaching out to them and uh, Joe said, you know, appreciated the information and the more she hears from more, more of her constituents, the more, the more she can go back to the mm -hmm. state, you know, to the, 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 the uh, House and Senate in, you know, the Massachusetts uh, State House and say, look, there's a lot of people supporting this, so. 
Um, I want to reach out to some of the other groups in town in, in the state also some of the other tree committees. Um, I've been just dealing with some other personal stuff, so I haven't really done that much. I was actually unofficially, I was officially off the tree committee in Amherst, but I just got reappointed. Amherst has this thing where they only want people on any committee for six years. So um, after 11 years, they kicked me off and, uh, but we didn't have, then we couldn't get quorum because we, two people <laughs> were out on leave and it was crazy. So they finally put me back on. So, um, Sarah, um, Sarah, whatever her name is, it's not coming to me right now, is uh, the, currently the chair, but I've been doing all the background stuff. So anyway, I still participate. Go ahead, yes. I have a question. Um, it, by the way, is it Sarah LaCour? No, it's, um, I'm just drawing a blank on her name. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Um, are those um, updates that you're talking about, are they in any kind of proposed bill or is it still just in the very early stages of formulating something? The chapter 87 update is in a bill. Yeah, ah. and there's a number which I can get for you. Okay. Um, the complete streets and the solar farm changes, I think, are just sort of discussion things. There, there is a group actually, there might be a bill on the solar farms issue. There's yeah. also a bill I just put in the chat called the municipal reforestation bill. Hmm. Um, it's just a fact sheet in the chat. It's not actually the link to the bill. I can put that in too. So Henry, I don't know if that's on your radar as well. Yes. Yeah, so um, that uh, took a hit because of funding. Their plan for funding fell through. So I don't know that that bill is actually going to pass. It's a great bill. I think it's really. It got out of committee. I know it I yeah. got out of committee. Um, and that's as far as I, I am part of a, a listserv called Gas Leaks Allies. Yeah, that's where that came up from originally. Yeah. 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 So you're saying that since then, it has been what, sent to study or? Um, I don't, uh, yeah, again, I'm a little rusty on that because I okay. wasn't following that that clearly, but um, I was talking to Joe about that. And at one point they had a, some sort of funding scheme that um, somebody convinced yeah, you know, that it wasn't going to work. And uh -huh. it sounds like, it yeah. Went, you know. I mean, you know, 98, 99% of all bills that get you know, proposed at the state legislature yeah. don't pass. So I'm not surprised to hear that. Yeah. Um, it's almost a foregone conclusion. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we still have to make yeah. good faith efforts and keep pushing good legislation. One of the reasons why I liked that bill is, as you know, uh, or uh, the others on the committee know, I'm, I'm really concerned with gas leaks and their impact on trees. And and that I believe that bill would reclassify. So, so gas leaks are classified in three grades, grade one, two, and three, one being like imminent risk of blowing something up to being high volume or close enough to something that it needs to be addressed within a shorter period of time and three really meaning like there's there's no reason why the gas company would ever have to deal with it and th grade threes can leak for decades and decades and decades as rich knows in front of my house um and what would happen is is grade threes located close to their close to a tree would would regrade to grade two Huh. Well, that's good. Yeah. So it may be that some of those things need to be broken out of the bill and separated into its own thing. This is a great bill, but it's very comprehensive and less chance of passing, obviously. Um, I think the chapter 87 is the thing that could pass quite easily with just a little bit of push. Mm. It's really them finding the time among all the other issues they've been dealing with to get it through. Um, and then um, I had been writing letters to the editor opposing solar in the past, and I kind of stopped for a while. And a couple of other people on the committee said they were going to do it, and it didn't happen. So um, it's you know getting people to write those letters and keeping that in, in attention. So, yeah. Um, are there other questions or? What kind of things um, is the Amherst Tree Commission working on besides those bills? Um, right now we're working on a. Um, a tour of um, downtown Amherst tour of shade trees that I've been working on with one other person. And we're hoping that we'll inaugurate that for Arbor Day this year. Mm. So we've selected about 25 trees in town and a walking route that um, would take about an hour to do. And eventually we'll have a brochure and everything, but the first step is to get people out and do the tour. Um, we're talking about you know what we're gonna plant this year. We're also doing, um, since we can't plant in July and August now, it's just too hot. and uh, we're doing more work days to care for trees we've already planted. Mm 
Um, we're trying to get a line item on the budget for trees, which doesn't exist in Amherst. And we had that bond issue that really boosted us, you know, some years ago. We had six hundred thousand dollars for two thousand trees, and now there's no money for it. So we have some equipment left over from that bond that helps Alan to do his work. Um, so yeah, we have to fight for every dollar for trees still. So, um, so that's that's much of what we're doing. Um, we've been doing a little more on social media, which I don't know how much that helps, but it helps a little bit, I guess. We don't have that many followers, but we're trying to build that on Facebook, Instagram. We have an account now, so you can like our Instagram and Facebook pages. <laughs> um, yeah, and really trying to build the committee back from um, Sarah Lawler, that's her name. She was on, she just had a baby, so she was on leave for that, she's back. Another woman had cancer and she was on leave, so she's back. So. Um, you know, it looks like we're starting to just really work together as a committee again, which is nice. And I'm back on the committee officially. So, yeah. I mean, it was weird. I was running the meetings. I was, you know, organizing everything behind the scenes, but I wasn't legally a member. So now I'm a member. So, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, David, did you have your hand up? Did you have a question? Uh, well, I, uh, you mentioned the significant tree ordinance in Amherst, or maybe it's called something else, tree protection ordinance. But I'd be curious, are you working on that, the committee? We were, uh, Sarah was really pushing that, and uh, it's it's not gonna fly with the town council the way it is right now, and the town government, the planning board is totally against it. Um, so we're, we've, we've scheduled meetings with different groups and met with them, but it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Um, Rich came and talked to us about it, which was helpful, but, also a little discouraging because yours is quite limited in what it does. We were trying to push to something a little broader. So, um, what, what is the planning board oppose? Yeah. Uh, they think it's taking away the rights of owners to do what they want with their land, basically. I mean, the planning board in Amherst has been pretty supportive of most big developments, you know, and it's good. It's good to support in town developments rather than out in the country developments, but, um, yeah, you got to allow for trees and you got to protect what's there. So, um, yeah, it was kind of disheartening to see how little chance we had of that passing. So it's still on our radar, but it's not actively being pursued right now. So, so I actually I think it, there's nothing equivalent to what we have, which is we have a little section in the zoning code, which allows for some tree protection under certain zoning circumstances. It's pretty, pretty, pretty limited. Yeah, but you're talking about a bigger one now, right? Yeah, we'd like to move towards something bigger. Yeah. Well, first, we're, we're trying to improve that one, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'd like to protect more trees. Yeah, yeah. So, and there's still, you know, lots of people who, terrified of trees hate trees want to put up solar and cut down the trees so you know it's a, it's a struggle but um yeah and really you know the reason i got involved with the tree committee in the first place was to plant trees i did not have any interest in the politics behind it but that's what needs to be done so yeah um i'm also just curious have you has the commission done any um thinking about spotted lanternfly about what Spotted lanternfly? Um, we've done a little publicity around it. We haven't done anything beyond that. Yeah. You have a brochure or something like that? No, we've just um, used some of the state brochures and some stuff that we've got online that we've then spread onto our social media. Ah. Um, yeah. We talk about it. We, we do a monthly newsletter blast on, you know, with MailChimp. Oh. And so we've, we've had a couple of bits on that. Hmm. Um, yeah. If you want to see it, I could add you to the mailing list. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. Molly's yeah. been working really hard well, identifying where the Atlantis Atlantis trees are because that's their favored tree uh -huh. and thinking about maybe we could we don't know what we're going to do with trees. <laughs> yeah. We don't know what we're going to do with that information yet but um we figured it would be helpful to at least know where the Atlantis trees are to have some sense of how big of a problem it's going to be even though they attack other trees too. Yeah, they do attack other trees. If they only attack the other invasive, that wouldn't be bad. But um, I have seen Atlantis along the railroad tracks in Northampton. 
I have not seen any in Amherst, but uh, there, there could be some, but yeah. Um, so yeah, um, you know, we're, we're trying to keep those words out too, but that's a little bit less of what we've been doing. Um, the newsletter, you know, we get 150, 200 people on the list and maybe half of them read that or at least open it. So it's not a huge effort, but hmm. you know, how do you get that out to 30,000 people in town is another question. But right. yeah. yeah. Well, I know Tree Northampton um, built up Facebook by um, actually buying pushes when we had certain mm. types of activities going on. We were running some educational programs on um, tree pass and some other um, programs. And when we'd have something like that, we'd pay. It's not very expensive. And we got more members that way. Well, that's good. Yeah, we're, we get in the news some, but yeah, I'm hesitant to give Facebook any money, you know? But, yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. Yeah, that might, maybe we have to do that at some point. So. This is yeah. Tree Northampton's our friends group. Yeah, no, I know the group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it so wasn't yeah. public money. That's it. Yeah. If you, um, I'll put my email address in the chat, and then if you want to get on the list, send me your email address, and I'll also get some other information. And um, that's I'd really love to be on your newsletter list. Okay. Let me put that in right now. Super. And there's my email address. I'll have to go into my emails to Joe and grab the other information, but I will get that to you. Thanks. Um, any other questions? I'll listen in for a few more minutes while I do that. But uh, yeah, thanks for all your work in Northampton. I love seeing the trees there. And uh, yeah, good to see you, Lily. Good to see you, Henry. Yeah. Henry, th thank you very much for coming today. And again, we, we should communicate in the future about trying to do a joint uh, yeah. Meeting, Thanks for giving me time. We meet always second Tuesday of the month at 530. Okay. Um, it's on Zoom this month. I think we might go back to in person next month. Okay. Um, but if you're, you're certainly welcome to come next Tuesday, the 8th, 530. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. It's great to see you. Yeah. Thank you. You too. Um, Do you have any questions for us, Harry? Henry? Um, no, I think that's good for now, especially because I, I do need to get out. But um, okay. I'm going to get that stuff to you before I go. So then if you have questions, uh, Thanks. You can ask me then. I'll yeah. email you too, so we can have uh, reconnect. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, quickly, uh, I'm just going to, my chair report is that I, I actually uh, had a meeting today with the mayor. Um, I met with the mayor for an hour and a half. Um, to really talk about a lot of, um, basically my intention of our meeting today was to develop a dialogue with her because I, I have not worked with her um, as closely as I had with Mayor Narkowitz. So um, I wanted to start out with trying to develop a dialogue with her individually as the tree warden, sort of outside of my duties as a DPW employee, because strangely enough, I worked for her as a tree warden by statute, but I also worked for her as an executive branch employee and I also work for her as a member of this commission. So it's kind of like all over the place. So um, the dialogue was good. Um, we, we, did, we did touch on a, uh, a few policy things in regards to uh, things that we're working on, the STO. Um, I did talk to her also about uh, a citywide tree ordinance similar to what Cambridge has. So she was very receptive to hear, uh, like more information. She's also, um, was receptive to strengthening the STO. Um, so I told her that I would keep her uh, in the loop. I also invited her to come to um, a future meeting, but I think we might uh, want to just measure that and have her at a meeting where we actually have some policy decisions or some policy questions for her that we want to ask, not just invite her to a, a meeting just to come and say hello and right. bye. Um, so I am hopefully going to try to set up a quarterly meeting with her um, every, uh, you know, one, every, so four times a year. I don't think that I, in that way there, I can actually establish a, a connection with her directly uh, in the tree warden function things, but also as, as the chair of the commission and have a little bit more of a direct 
communicate with her. Um, so it, it was a productive meeting. So, um, I don't have any anything to report as tree warden. Everything is all quiet. No trees are being cut down. No one's asking for trees to be cut down. So we are we are just we're plugging along. Um, yes, Sue, you're muted. Um, traditionally, Mayor Narkowitz would do a proclamation on Arbor Day. I don't know if that's something she must know about that, but um, is there anything we can do to assist? And we'll also be doing a, a press release that will go through her office. Yeah, so, so I, I, don't know if those I came up. yeah, they, um, those specifically did not come up, but I will make sure that they have, once we have figured out exactly what our Arbor Day or in service day activities are going to be, we can put all that together. But yes, I, you know, I, I, bet I spent a, quite a bit of time with her just kind of going over um, MGL 87 and how it actually um, applies um, in, you know, in the tree warden world and how that would actually, what kind of support that I would need from her in the event that we have someone who can, you know, contests a, a hearing. Um, you know, we also talked a little bit about um, the, uh, the communication, you know, the, the Warfield Place project. Um, she asked me what our time frame was for planting there. And, you know, I said there, I'm working with our engineering department to determine the remaining work that has to happen on Warfield Place with, by the contractor before we can plant. So I can have a time frame uh, to work with and also set up some meetings with residents in person to talk about, uh, you know, reliefing the street and uh, species selection, et cetera planting work days. So um, we, we touched on a lot of big picture things. Um, and it was really nice to sit down and, uh, and meet with her because of the relationship that I have with Mayor Narkowitz was a little different. Because before I was the tree warden, I was, you know, I was the highway superintendent. And that was a, a functionality of my day to day operation. And, and um, I had a different relationship with Mayor Narkowitz. So I'm hoping to establish um, a, a relationship with this mayor that is a little different um then about my operational because you know operationally speaking donna is the one that would talk to the mayor about dbw operations and i kind of fit in this tucked in this little box and i you know i like to i'm going to swing out of that box and make um an effort to keep her uh posted uh and informed on things that we're working on and also uh things that are related to the tree world that we need her support on and her input so um, so with that said, I, we want to take a few minutes and try to knock out the minutes. If folks had a chance to read them, that would, that's great. If they didn't, we just let me know when you're done, please. I'm done. They're very short. Okay. Right. Uh, give me a second. I got to locate them. I need a second too. That's, that's fine. Okay, I'm done. I'm good. I'm done too. Okay, excellent. Um, may I have, does anyone have any comments? Okay, may I have a motion to approve the minutes as uh, presented? I'll move to approve the minutes as presented. May I have a second, please? Second. All right, thank you, Molly. Thank you, Jen. Um, may I have a roll call vote? Uh, any discussion on the motion? No discussion. Roll call vote, please, Deb, if you would. Sure, Rich? Uh, aye. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Jen? Yes. And David? Yes. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, 
Our next uh, item of business is a, a Rotary Club in Service Day and Arbor Day update. Um, Sue, do you want to? I know you were communicating with uh, Barbara Devlin from the Rotary Club. Do you have any? I was. I think. Um, I think. Um, David has the most recent news. And if I understood it correctly, we have the go ahead and we can go back to Barbara Devlin. She's she's working really hard on this. And um, she's, um, I could refer to an email from her, but David, can you confirm where we are exactly with the April 9 project that we were hoping? Yeah, for? so the, the newish uh, principal of Jackson Street, Lauren Brown, is very supportive of a, a significant tree planting on April 9th. And I, I think she would like to see really all the trees on the map, but it's not once Tony, the maintenance guy takes a look, he's liable to knock out a bunch of them and get us down to, I don't know, 25 or 20 trees, I think. But we have, but, but Lauren is supportive of, of the plan. Hmm. Um, David, do you have a sense from talking to the principal when the uh, maintenance director would be looking at the plan? Because we really were, going to be a month out. From the well, uh, so uh, Rob and Chris Chamberlain, who's a parent and a neighbor, they, they, uh, I think Rob reached out to Tony to schedule a walk around. Okay. The idea is to plant stakes where the proposed trees will go. Okay. And then he can, Tony can critique the scheme. Okay. I'm, I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little concerned just about the time frame because of we, you know, Majority of the trees that we would plant in the project would probably be bare root. Yep. So we, I need to, um, and Rob and I have put a, um, a list together based on the inventory, um, based on the list of the locations at the school plus what available inventory that uh, Chestnut Ridge has. So I'm, we're probably just at this point, probably going to pull the, not pull the plug in the negative way, but in the positive way and actually order the trees. Um, and then um, we will have to, if for some reason the school project gets scuttled or gets so minimized that it, we need to split the groups in half, we'll have another location to go to. Um, the other problem I, I worry about is us getting the, the bare root trees by um, the ninth, only because of where they're coming from. They're upstate New York. So, I, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. So. Um, I guess I will reach out to Rob and see where he's at with Tony. He, Rob wasn't able to be here tonight. So. Yeah, that sounds good. I, I wouldn't be concerned about the, the plan being scuttled at this point by the, by the principal. I mean, it would really just be scuttled by Tony and I, I really, and he's expressed his support for more trees. So at most, I think he would reduce it from 42 trees to 20 trees or something. You know, if it's clear, if um, Lauren talked to the superintendent of schools, she did. So Barbara really wanted to yep. get involved well, in that. I, right? I think Lauren emailed Tony and Tony said, uh, talk to Tree Northampton, whatever they recommend. I'll... I didn't understand that part of the email, the way it was written. Tony wanted Lauren to talk to Tree Northampton or? Well, so Tony doesn't know who I am. Right. So she might have thought that I just came out of the woodwork and suggested we plant all these trees. So I think Tony was saying, um, go through Tree Northampton. They know what they're doing when it comes to citing trees, choosing the right species. Okay. Cause, so it's a little bit of misunderstanding because I'll yeah, put but, that rich authority. And then um, Barbara has some questions. For instance, she was talking to Council LaBarge and um, at a rotary meeting they had a discussion and um, Marianne wanted to noted that Ryan Road Elementary School has appropriate land um, and wanting multiple sites that day. So I need to respond to, to Barbara. Um, and do we, about the idea of multiple sites and um, also they, they did get, um, People's Bank is wants to donate money. That's kind of neat. So I kind of pass that part of it on to Rich, as far as um, how that that money is going to go through the Rotary Club, I guess, and then it would support the tree program, probably in in kind is probably a better route. Yeah, that's, um, that's the easiest way to do it. But not with cash to the city. No. Um, 
So what about uh, an additional site in responding to Marianne Labarge and, and Barbara on that? And a possible another school involved. I think it's a lot logistically myself, but well, it, it would be if it's bare if it's all bare root stock, we can easily do two locations. So okay. Example, if if uh, Jackson Street School ends up being limited or there's a, a limited number of trees that can be allowed, um, Ryan, we could just shift them to Ryan Road, or we could just look at Ryan Road and actually make some inroads. At Ryan Road and just plant. We did plant trees there in 2016 um, as part of an Arbor Day planting. We worked with the schools. Um, I don't know if they survived. I don't think they did. They were in the tree belt in front of the school. But uh, okay, if I understand correctly, was it Leeds School that there was a conversation that got cut short by COVID? But um, what about Ryan Road School? Has anyone talked? Have you had any contact with them? No. I'll I, ask I, Rob I, if he has. Uh, the only thing I've heard is from the Hitchcock Center, it sounds like the principal is kind of an environmentalist. So, uh, but is the, is she the champion of this tree planting project or, or who is? It was Marianne Labarge who was asking about it. So who, who, who is Marianne Labarge? Oh, she's the uh, city councilor. Oh, I should know that. I'm sorry. I should yeah. have explained that. And she's very active in the Rotary Club. Okay. So the Rotarians <laughs> are are, are um, in, anxious to hear about the sites where we're going to be planting and they're anxious to organize volunteers and they've even offered to be the project volunteer liaison for this so anybody who wanted to volunteer if they're parents from the school from tree northampton they would all go through barbara for that day and she would help with the communications with the volunteers both the rotary volunteers and anybody else and of course it's well they would welcome anyone in the community um, especially parents and students from from the school. Um, so the moving the pieces that are really up in the air is Marianne Labarge, city councilor, wanting to know about Ryan Road School, if that could be a potential second site. And then we need a if if we want to say, yeah, we'll look into that, then we need to um, somebody needs to be in charge of reaching out to Ryan Road School and going through the process that you did so masterfully, David, with um, <laughs> with the Jackson Street School. So is that something we can look, think about doing? Or do we, or we could ultimately, we could say, oh, we could do that. We can start work on that now for later in the spring. Rich is saying we could have multiple sites, but can we do this coordination work? Do we have enough, um, do we have enough uh, experienced planters to supervise both sites? I, that's a really good question, and I would say maybe. I think I think it depends, and I, and I and I'm I'm trying not trying to be evasive, but I don't really know people's availability for that day. Exactly. Or planters. I also am concerned a little bit about the weather, so you know that's another. Yeah. Like I don't want to take a whole bunch of bare root trees, and then all of a sudden there's like a nine inch snowstorm that happens. Yeah. We're stuck with the bare root trees, and you know what do we what do we do with them? We'll have to bury them in wood chips for however long before we can plant them again. I mean, I already went through that process once and it's kind of a pain, but, but I do think, I actually think it's really important for us to reach out to Ryan Road School um, and utilize the springboard that Councilor Barge is offering because of the fact that Ward 6 is one of the wards that we struggled to actually plant in. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's um, disproportionately um, in comparison to the rest of the awards. I think it's important for us to, if we have something there, we should try to grab it. Even, even if we, even if it's not a rotary planting, we should still think about going there, um, you know, as the commission and with uh, the help of Tree Northampton or whoever else wants to volunteer to get trees planted there. And then hopefully that'll kind of uh, word of mouth, we can try to get, because there's a lot of land in Ward 6 um, especially in the Ryan between Ryan Road and Bird Spit Road area, that is really just lacking of street trees, and there's wide layouts there. And we've had a lot of trouble getting into that area. Um, and if we have Councilor Barge behind us helping us with this, I think that really would be um, something that would kind of break that log jam. Can I get back to Barbara and say we'd love to work with Councilor Barge on? Um, connecting with the school principal at Ryan Road 
and looking at potentially having a second site that on the April 9th, and if not, to get the wheels moving so that um, we're serving that community. Mm. Is everybody comfortable with that? I'm, I'm in favor of that myself. I don't okay. know. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so that's my to do. Could we maybe have Arbor Day as the backup planting day for Ryan Road? Or do we already have a site set out for Arbor Day? I don't remember. No, I, I don't think we do at the moment, but I think it would be a great backup location. That'd be a really nice theme. Yeah, yeah so one way or another, we will we will get some trees planted there and make some. Okay, great. Um, I don't. The other half of the Arbor Day update, the only thing I have for you right at the moment is that I did the tree whips are ordered. Um, and I'm still, um, Rob and I are going to Zoom um, probably the next couple of days to just finalize the tree order. And then we will um, get the, I have to put a contract together for the Amherst Nursery order, but the Chestnut Ridge is just a single standalone order. So, yes, Jen. Do you have a ballpark date for when those whips come in, just so I can kind of get it on my calendar of when we're? Uh, I, they're scheduled to come in on the 25th. On the 25th, okay. Yeah, of April, sorry, of April. So that would be the Monday before Arbor Day. Uh, let me just make sure. April. You, uh, Did you tell us already what you've ordered for whip uh, DC yeah. so we can get the sheets ready? <laughs> I, you know what I'll do? I'll send you an email. Lovely. Some of them, um, the sheet is on my desk at home. I don't have okay. It. See if we can get some nice display materials together. Okay. All right, perfect. It'll be here before we know it. Yes. Anyone else have anything? Sorry, Jen, I know you're still looking at your calendar. No, that's okay. I'm typing it in. That's, okay. I'm good. All right. Cool. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Um, anyone else have any questions, comments about Arbor Day? Uh, update and Rotary Club. No. Okay. All right. We're a little off track, but that's okay. Um, so uh, STO discussion is our next agenda item. So I have, so let me just, David sent an email out today that talked about the STO and some comments. I, I hopefully you, you all saw it. Um, Sue shared um, with all of us the, the document of the, uh, P, the PNS and UFC SDO changes. It was a PDF of a document that comments were made on um, from our last meeting. So how would, you, how would you like to go about this? Do you want to review that document? You know, because I think we are, we're, we're getting close to where we need to be, but I think we have to ask a discussion about uh, a few things in within the STO and some of the proposed changes. So I'm not sure how people would like to, where they want to start. Just want to dive into the document and the comments that were made. Yeah, I, I think that's, does that make sense? Or does people want to have a? No, it makes, it makes complete sense to me. I'm just trying to figure, I mean, I know there's kind of like two conversations that we're going to have to have here. One conversation is about the existing STO and the changes we're making. The other conversation we have to have is about um, just an overall general tree protection ordinance like Cambridge has. So, you know, right. my personal opinion on this is that I think we need to get the STO changes done, get it tightened up, get it down to the mayor's office, um, have a conversation with her about this, and, um, and we're going to have to have a conversation with Wayne, and we're going to carry this forward. And um, two things that I think we, um, two things that I think we need to do with one is that we need to make sure that we are very clear to the mayor and to um, planning and to any other anyone else that wants to listen that you know we're not finished. The STO may be done and it might go in front of council, but we we will be back to discuss a citywide ordinance uh, of uh, private trees because I think it's really it's it's really uh, as David put in his uh, email fair and equitable and, and I think. Uh, we have to address this issue one way or another. Um, and the more information that we can gather and the more um, um, and the more data we can provide, how other communities have done it, will make that job easier for us, I think, to, to sell to uh, the mayor and to um, individual counselors that will have to support any legislative changes. I mean, I'm sure we'll probably receive 
pushback from planning, but um, that's that's the nature of planning. Uh, Lily has a question. Do you mind if I Lily joins the conversation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Lily, go, ahead, go ahead, please. Thanks. Well, you know, to be able to participate as a member of public in this in 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 understanding your deliberations, it would be helpful to have shared with me either in a screen share or show me what document you're working off of yeah. and where you are in the deliberations, what kind of feedback. Yeah, we'll come to gone. that in a minute, I think. Yeah, yeah I, have, I have a screen share. I'm going to open it. Okay, up. okay. So just, just wasn't sure if you all were working off a Google Doc that I was not going to be able to see. No, no, no. no. We have, we've made, we've made, we've tried to do this in an open meeting and uh, we, uh, Sue is the collector of all the comments. And then they get loaded into the document and then you just keep moving the document forward. Um, so what I'll do is I will do a, a uh, share screen. Let me just find my screen one. And just a reminder for people, we've worked on this over quite a bit of time and it's gone back and forth with planning. There have been some important word changes. The actual ordinance itself, we're discussing changing the name of. That does not show up on what Rich is sharing, but um, going from significant tree ordinance to tree protection ordinance. Whereas planning was moving towards mature canopy. Everyone see that? Yes, um, but Rich, you, what you have to do is you're gonna have to go through it and click on those little yellow boxes mm, to I pop up, click. pop so, up what the comments are. So can you see the can you see the column on the right where it says yes. comments? So your comments, your comments yep. are right there in uh, in blue. Oh, so, okay. Okay. All right. Oh, it's just yeah. I figured it out. It took me a while, but I got it. So. Um, okay, so I am more than welcome, I'm more than happy to have whoever wants to start the conversation, please do, I'm, I've talked a lot. So, yes. so I have a, just at the very top there, is there a, um, is there a sheet that is included in this um, that is going to define mature? We're taking out the word mature. We don't like it. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Because, okay, I guess I'm confused. Tell me again how to. Uh, um, the one, uh, the part on the right is deleted. So, what yeah. were you talking about? How to get the. We were just going to say inventory of any trees as defined because they're going to be defined below anyway. So, we should have put remove mature canopy. Okay, inventory that's what was tree. confusing to me. Yeah, sorry. Exactly. The I line thought, should be through mature too, correct? Yep. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Did, what does okay. that? Mm. Molly, can you see the blue? Yeah, I see it. I see it. I thought we had knocked out mature. I don't know why it's. I thought so too, but we were having trouble with the format. Function. I, I what do you mean by the blue? Okay, so in, in the column, all the way in the right hand side yeah. of, the, of the screen share, you'll see where it says Molly. Oh, okay. All right, so people Molly's, over that. Molly's, gotcha. Molly's okay. Comments are gotcha. With the yellow uh, stickies. Yep, I got it. Okay. But it's hard to tell what those comments on the right, which yellow sticky they correspond to. That's yeah, if you yeah. click on the yellow sticky, it tells you what that thing is at that okay. location. I, I can do that as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. So one of the things that I, um, in a conversation I had with Lily. Um, most recently about this is um, the, the name, the naming of the ordinance or naming of the tree. And one of the things that, um, you know, was she brought to my attention, which might be another way of looking at this is actually an inventory of any valued or valued tree. And I, I, I'm just putting that out there because I think that value speaks to people. Mm. The whole reason we are protecting trees is because they have a value. Mm. Hmm. 
So it's, it might be, uh, Lily, you might want to speak to this a little more. Um, Only that I can see the confusion with the word significant because that in some people's minds signifies size, mm -hmm. is a proxy for size. Mm -hmm. Whereas valued or important are more broad, broadly, mm -hmm. you know, connoted, uh, connoting significance. So mm -hmm. significance trips people up but valued or important hmm. don't. What about protected trees? And then we define what we consider protected. I like value, but. Um... So, so one, of the, one of the things that I have that um, in the nomenclature, uh, you know, in my in the arborist hat I have on is they, when you say a protected tree, the first thing that I go to is a tree that has tree protection around it during construction. Got it. It's not necessarily but, uh, it's not necessarily a tree that is 20 inches that is in a development that's being worked on that's not protected. So for example, um, uh, off of Birch Pit Road, there yeah. were a whole bunch of construction done there and there are trees in the background that are not near any construction that is, uh, they are significant trees, um, but they are not protected. So I, I, I would, I, I think it would yep. be, Confusing. confusing. I think that I like I like valued tree. Yeah, me too. Because I really think it defines, you know, the whole point of this ordinance is the value of this tree or the importance right. of this tree. Um, significant tree. That's the first question I get from um, people that are applying uh, that have questions about the this ordinance. What is a significant tree? Mm. You know, and and I mean, all as far as I'm concerned, all trees are significant, right? So they, my answer is not a really good one, but um, so that's, and I thank Lily for putting that little seed in my head, so. Um, you know, I was just reading a chapter in, um, in our whatever community forestry, uh, uh, urban forestry planning and managing urban green spaces book, Rich and I are in the same UMass class. And they have a chapter on value on what they call special trees. And um, I'm just going to pop in the chat um, how, how they classify uh, special trees. Let me see if it worked. Hold on. Uh, I didn't work. Hold on. Because it's a, it's a little bit, it's interesting because it's a little bit broader. And I find that it's um, uh, useful not to narrow yourself um and for them it here let me try again let me copy say the name of the book again uh it's called urban forestry colon planning and managing urban green spaces and okay here we go so they have four categories of a special tree the first is a specimen, a tree of exceptional size, form, or rarity. The second is historic, a tree recognized by virtue of its age, its association with it, or contribution to a historic structure or district, or its association with a noted person or a historic event. I'm thinking of the um, mulberry white, tree. White mulberry tree, exactly. Yeah, right. Um, which wouldn't fall under any protection right now. Landmark tree, um, landmarks of the community and then collection trees, trees, and I like this one, in a um, notable grove avenue, or I lost the last bit, or other planting. And I think about how um, when Dave and I tried to work on this years ago, we, we tried to um, right. get a special protection for groups of trees because of their sort of, um, exponential value as a cluster of trees and and that kind of went nowhere but it's clear that other communities have seen value in um collections of trees um back to the wording um what what are you finding you found historic and what were the other ones it's in the chat it's so specimen historic landmark or collection mm. And I don't want to get you you all too hung up, but but I do think that you know def, defining I see. the a valued tree broadly is um, is important because otherwise we could we could lose the protection of <laughs> some trees that 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 aren't captured by the DBH. 
But for the purposes of this ordinance, um, the trees that we're talking about are specifically um, defined in that table in 350.12.3b. Those are the trees that are the ones affected by this ordinance. And the ones that, that are listed here in the chat are, it seems like those are ones that have to be, you know, would be discussed in an expansion of this ordinance for like broader trees. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, I see your point, Molly, um, but I think that there would be some cases, for example, that tulip tree on um, Dewey Cord, which falls under the significant tree ordinance. It was, a, it was like the third or fifth largest specimen of uh, tulip tree in Northampton. Mm. You know, that, I mean, that is caught by the mm. size, but you know, you could have on a private property, a kind of what would be considered historic or landmark tree that is not necessarily enormous. So just something to think about. I think that what happened was the planning department came back with this idea of um, taking significant tree out in a lot of places and putting in mature canopy. And we felt that was vague. And David came up with, well, our real mission is protecting these trees. So should we call them protected? But now Rich is saying that that's confusing because there's another meaning of protect tree protection. So we're kind of back to the drawing board. David, any thoughts? Well, I, I think the there's almost an advantage just to maintaining the word significant because this is an ordinance to Molly's point. I mean, it Significant significant trees has meaning if you look at the definition section of the zoning code. Um, and I think it's good shorthand for what we're talking about, which is a tree that's, you know, 20 dBH currently. But... And it says, it says right in the sentence as defined in blah, 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 blah. Right. So in, in a way, whatever adjective or no adjective we pick to go in front of trees is not a defining word. It's, it's, the definition is in that table. That's right. We could say qualifying tree and it would have the same. Yeah, thing. yeah. Okay, so. Are you planning on having any input into the definition in 350-12.3? Uh, good question. That seems like a keystone thing that they're trying to put through. Um, this idea of having different um, different diameter thresholds for different parts of the city in order to discourage development um, in the outlying areas. So they have smaller diameter trees out there that would be where you'd have to pay or replace them if you take those out. Um, so we... Yeah, we haven't talked about actually changing the whole concept of moving I, them, some of them down. Yeah, I I think that you aren't going to be able to change the table very much. Maybe you'll be able to change some of the numbers. I, I don't know, but I don't think you're going to be able to change the <laughs> that map concept. I think that's I I just don't think. You know, they're pretty, um, I think the planning board and whoever else is kind of in the sphere um, is pretty um, committed to, you know, trying to do infill. Yeah. You know? And that's yeah. going to mean, and they're willing, they're, they're willing to, you know, pay the price of trees versus infill with saying, okay, but now we won't let them do it out here. It's going to cost more money if they do it out of outside the maps, you know? So I personally, I could be wrong, but I personally feel like that's like a key keystone in this thing. And I, I think that's going to be very difficult to get them to move on. Should we try? Well, would the reason be, well, what would you try to do? Like lower the threshold for the in-city ones? 
Yeah, I mean, that, I think it, that's what we're... We can try, but it, it's going to go against their whole goal of what they're trying to... Yeah. Do. They're trying to promote in-city, you know, in the urban area development and discourage out yeah. of the urban area development. Right. They're trying to make certain goals for sustainability. So, I, so I, I, would, I would push back on that thought process and, and this is why. So the difference between the, the overall benefit uh, between a 20 inch tree and a 15 inch tree, according to um, Casey, Casey Tree Foundation National Tree Calculator is $166 versus $200. So 15 inch tree value is $166. Uh, a 20 inch tree value is $200 in benefits basically. So I personally think that we are well within our right to tell them and send them back um, in the two, uh, the URC line and the HB line that those should be 15 inches or greater. Um, oh, okay. So, Let's do it. Well, I like that. Well, and, and, and you know, it's, Basically, with just short little short data, you know, this ordinance that we have of 20 inches or greater, um, you know, is weak in comparison to other ordinances around the state that have similar types of zoning uh, language. Um, and and I don't think that it would really, from what I've seen, and this is they, you know, every time we speak spoken to them, they always are coming back and telling us, and Lily's experienced this as well when she was the chair of the commission. That, you know, well, we are going to, uh, we are going to, uh, you know, people are not going to want to, it's going to cost too much money to, to do this development. And so they're not going to want to submit plans um, to the planning board. I, I say poppycock. Yeah. $34. You know, well, yes, but the whole, right. The, and the whole point is, is that we're not even replacing the trees at their current. No, uh, it's current so frustrating. So, and the other thing is, is that um, if someone wants to build a, you know, construct a project and they, they want to do the work, they are going to pay to have the trees removed because they need to be removed. So they will do it, whether it's 20 inch or 15 inch. I, I don't think five inches on a tree is going to break a project mm -hmm. I really don't at all. Um, if I'm understanding, you're saying the cost goes from 166 to 200. The value. The, 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 benefit. Oh, the value. Right. So the benefit. So basically what I'm saying is that there is for the, the, amount of, the amount of benefit we're gaining by keeping a 15 inch tree um, versus a 20 inch tree, it, it's the benefits outweigh the loss. And the fact of the matter, we have a 15 inch tree that we're saving. And if they happen to save the tree in the construction project, that tree is young, it's vigorous, it's going to grow quickly. Um, it's going to going to provide a lot of benefits um, right. going forward and if the developer needs to cut the tree down then that we will at least capture the value of those 15 inch trees versus the 20 inch tree that's one hurdle the next hurdle is to get them to recognize that half the dbh is not really like realistic it's not real right, right. Uh, and that's going to be a whole nother lift but i'm I'm saying we should go to 15 and that's it. This is like, this is like your final offer, whatever they call it, your final deal. Um, go ahead. I Bill. agree with, oh, sorry, Jen, go ahead. Sorry. sorry. I, I agree with that because you still maintain their little structure. That was the thing I was saying is if you mm. try to like scrap yeah. this map thing, yeah, yeah. We're, we're just going to get nowhere. But I, I, I'm, after hearing you, Rich, I totally, and I understand the tree value thing. I've used the calculators before. So I, I, I agree with that. That's, that sounds good. Um, well, so while we're discussing that 15 inch diameter, um, should we discuss like whether it should be 14 or 12? I mean, uh, why 15? Maybe we should go for 12 and then compromise halfway in between or something. <laughs> yeah, I like I mean, your thinking. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I really, I struggle with this ordinance because this is a, it's a lot of uh, back and forth, and we are, you know, they are com complete competing interests, right? Yeah. Between what they're trying to uh, establish and what we're trying to maintain. I mean, in essence, you know, we are trying to, 
maintain existing right existing ecosystem and they're trying to establish uh, regulations that removes that ecosystem to a certain yeah. it doesn't truly replace it at 100 percent of of its benefit exactly so yeah I'm, I'm okay with going lower um i think we'll probably get a pushback on us but that's fine i mean this is what this is all about um you know and the mayor in a conversation i had with the mayor today she asked me if we had ever had a meeting um, with planning sustainability, um, myself and other members of the commission and the mayor about this subject. And I said, <laughs> I remember one meeting we had way back in the beginning when we drafted some changes, when we first were a commission, we sat with Mayor Narkowitz. But other than that, it was Lily, myself, Mayor Narkowitz, and off with Carolyn or Wayne, I can't remember Lily, but we've never had that. So, so uh, uh, mayor, the mayor said, I think that would be a good place to go if you end up with an impasse or, you know, because I want to support the legislation um, that, that you're all supporting that actually hopefully um, will work. But again, you know, it, about compromise to a certain degree. Um, I, I don't have a problem with the, with the, um, with the table they have. Um, I just have a problem with the two 20 inches or greater. Yeah. That's, that's my problem in that particular table anyways. Well, I, be very happy to decrease that 20 inch okay. to something. And okay. uh, uh, Lily. Um, <clears throat> so I, I think that you all should be as aggressive as you can be. And, and to remember that legislators don't even know that this is going on. And they, so, so the perception that the other side is, you know, entrenched or is not going to move as much as you may think is just not, it's, we're a representative democracy and our counselors who are the ones that are actually going to vote on this have mm. not, don't even know about this, let alone had a chance to weigh in. Mm. So I think that I, I, in general, don't object to this, you know, uh, zoning base, you know, schedule. And, um, and yet I think that the 20 inches is outrageous. It's so out of scale of what other municipalities have that asking for 12 inches, frankly, still on the outer limits mm -hmm. of what other municipalities do. So it's totally reasonable. And it gives you a little bit of room to maneuver. I wouldn't I wouldn't maneuver much until you have, you know, counselors saying I won't support anything, you know, that is more protective than 15 inches. Well, then, then, then you, th that's when you compromise, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. What communities, Lily, when you say other municipalities? Um, Cambridge, Concord, mm, I want to say Newton um lexington i'm pretty sure I, I i created a spreadsheet david and i did way back um i can okay. uh, you know it's still it, it's still operational I'm just thinking of you know building our arguments oh yeah so i absolutely also, think one of should... our priorities as a commission also is to um have a good relationship with planning and sustainability and we have moved forward on that um so there's always a balancing act, but thank you. Um, and then the other thing I was gonna ask about, and maybe if you slide down, it, it'll be apparent is, can you remind me what, how the pricing, the replacement value is defined, whether there's a fixed price written in there or, or it's reference to whatever is the, you know, um, prevailing, amount i can't remember what it was but i also think this notion of that that it's gauged by half like if if i recall like half inch of the caliper diameter of the place something like that um i also feel like that's an area where we could push back um that yeah. we're, we're essentially giving away the store some and and that if we're creating clearly the current significant tree ordinance does not or does a very poor job of discouraging developers to um, to take down trees, 
And as Rich said, I believe that the market pressure is so strong that developers who really want to develop a certain site will, will just pay whatever amount that they have to, to make it happen. I mean, the profit margin is so great that the, the city should, you know, uh, adjust this so that really is market-based and not a giveaway. Yeah, yeah. So can you remind me what the language is around? It's, right. it's on that page right now, that paragraph near the bottom that says A. The, 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 the dollar amount is not in the ordinance. So the dollar amount is $100 per caliper inch. And how is that referenced uh, that in the is, ordinance? It's not referenced in the ordinance. I don't think it's referenced. Uh, hmm. uh, so well, hard we went through uh, this. Yeah, it's so oh, wait, 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 wait. Pay funds, keep going down. Oh yeah, right down in the bottom. Pay funds. Um two. Pay funds to the city so for replacement a, fund. Uh, right, account that is in the planning board that's no will allow the city to plant new shade trees on city property in accordance with the above formula. End of story. That's it. Where's the formula? The formula is half the deviate. But so, how does that translate to money? Uh, it's $100 per caliper inch. Oh. And it's not graduated uh, according no. to the size of the tree. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like that's an area where David and I, uh, you know, based on the work that Molly did demonstrating yeah. the exponential value of a tree yeah. as, you know, the bigger it gets, that, uh, you know, that, that the larger the tree, the, the higher value per additional inch should should be considered. So I, I feel like that's another area where um, I believe we can get good traction. I spoke to Marissa Elkins today about that and she felt like that's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Increase the cost that it takes to replace the tree. I mean, she was like, yeah, decrease the DBH, increase the cost. And you know that, that those two things together would strengthen um, the ordinance. So I feel like that's another area that just because the planning department, it's really the planning department, mm -hmm. it's Wayne and Carolyn who have said that, that, that that's not something that they're willing to entertain. That's just not the end of the story. I think it's very interesting. The mayor's willing to referee. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think the, I think it would be, in our, it's obviously in our best interest. We're crafting ordinance here and we are an executive branch of commission, but I, I definitely got the sense today that the mayor is very interested in tree protection and would like to see, um, you know, our draft of this ordinance. So I think when we are done with this, um, I will probably go down and knock on her door and have a conversation with her and say, this uh -huh. is what we come up with. Um, and you know, are you willing to support this? Because it would not, it would be wonderful to have uh, her support and then the council support. Of course, this has to go through its whole public process, public hearing, et cetera. The planning board gets the way in because it is zoning. But um, I think that's kind of where we have to go. And I don't disagree with anything that anything any of you have said about this. So, um, you know, well, I mean, why, don't we, why don't we put some aggressive um, changes in there? and and send it back to them. That, like, like change 20 inches to 12 inches or 13 or something like that. That's... I would just say, if we're gonna be aggressive, why not be as aggressive as Cambridge was and make the ordinance applicable to all trees, not just those that are, you know, part of a site plan. So I hear what you're saying, but I think that is a, totally different conversation. Yeah, I think so too. Um, only because we are trying to, we're trying to craft existing ordinance. So basically what we were doing is, we would basically throw this whole ordinance out and say we're starting over again, which I think we, I think we should continue with this one, but also have that conversation at the same time. Um, because I think that is, that's where we should be headed in the grand scheme of things. Because we really need some kind of trigger to uh, protect trees that are, you know, under this by right, um, you know, that are that are removed under this by right construction that is now yeah. allowed. 
Um, I did mention that to the mayor today about the fact that, um, you know, kind of taking a step back and looking at the, the zoning ordinance. And of course, that's not my bailiwick, but I did mention to her taking, taking a step back and looking at the infill development and how it's impacted um, individual neighborhood tree canopies would be something that we should think about because when the ordinance was crafted in 2013, before things really kind of took off, um, you know, we talking about, there was no studies done on the infrastructure, the tree infrastructure. There were studies done on the stormwater, the sewer and the water infrastructure, how they would be impacted by a projected X amount of new single family homes. But the um, ecological impact of these new single family homes was not taken into account unless I'm missing something, which I might you, be. You've brought this up a number of times and were you able to bring this up with the mayor? Uh, I, I mean, I, I was to a certain level um, talking about, I, I gave her the information about the Cambridge ordinance so she could look at it and kind of, kind of told her that there is there are other communities that have done this. Um, Cambridge is the best example that we have. And so their solicitor and their legal department has said that this is actually a doable thing under, um, you know, and I, I don't know what kind of pushback Cambridge has had. I am going to make a call to Dave Lefcourt, who's the tree warden, to have a conversation with him about it. And I'll have more information for you. But um, anyways, that's my take. I've taken up enough time. Anyone else have comments? Well, I propose, I propose what we do is change the table. So it replaced the 20s with 12s, first of all. And then um, I propose we change the thing about replacement. Can you scroll up to, yeah, right there. Um, let's see. Well, I think we should at least make it one-to-one -one instead of half. Okay, so that's E. It's E1A. One and just so you know, caliper diameter, that is measured, I think it's 12 inches above the ground. Um, so if, yeah. is that an industry standard or are you suggesting we that's, need to? No, that's what, the, yeah. that's what I looked up what caliper diameter means. Okay, so we don't, you aren't suggesting we have to do anything, you're just helping us no. understand. Yeah. Caliper, just saying that calip most of the time standing landscape urban forest trees are measured in DBH. Right. So caliper diameter, that's not, you, that, that caliper is usually generally referred to how you're supposed to grade nursery stock. Mm -hmm. And there's rules about you go up about uh, six inches if it, six inches from the base or oh, six inches yeah not a six foot. inches and then if it's of a certain size you go up a foot so, so I, that terminal it should we should it should be dbh throughout the whole thing okay well, but if you read it carefully jen so read that last sentence it says replacements shall be calculated so that for each inch of diameter price height of the removed trees, mm -hmm. there shall be no less than half inch of caliper diameter oh, of replacement oh, oh. trees. Gotcha, sorry, yes. thank you. Yes. So thank if you, you yes. just change that to one inch, you're, um, yes. you are satisfying and you do wanna keep it caliper because it's referring yes. to younger trees. Yeah, yeah, thank you, sorry, I misread that, thank you. That's okay. So that would be the nursery language. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so we'll change E1A to one inch and, mm -hmm. replace and remove half inch. All right. Do we wanna look at the little squares to see what we had changed if we, like the little boxes, we just mm -hmm. yep. start at the top, go down, hover yeah. over each one. So we most can- of them are, Most of them are very minor, but there is one major one with that mm -hmm. paragraph. All right, I just want to make you aware of the time. It's 5.56, so oh boy. as long as we... We, we want to get this thing done. Yeah. Right, but I have some other changes that I need to make, uh, oh. some technical changes that I haven't put in here in regards to uh, the tree inventory part of it that I want to put back the planning throughout. So, so 11, okay, 11, can we go over? Is it, if, does anybody have another commitment? No. 
Rich, how do you feel about it? Do you have to be in we, we No, we can go over. It's fine. I could probably go over for maybe like 15 minutes or something. I, I can't go like a half an hour or something. Okay, let's try to zoom. Okay. 11.5B2I, existing proposed landscaping. The, the yellow thing goes down below. Down below. Mm -hmm. What do we want that to be? Well, we what? wanted to strike out. We wanted to strike out the word mature. Yeah, and, and canopy inventory of any. And do we want another word in there like valued? Or we could just see trees it's, as defined in blah blah blah. Yeah, that's what we were saying. Like let's like because yeah. we just have all these conversations about adjectives. Okay, fine. Net next square. What is so? I wrote that down. One remove tree and canopy. Okay, yeah. Next square is uh, three fifty. Uh, it's uh, line four three fifty dash one two point three tree replacement. Uh, Molly just says remove. She removed canopy. It's not in there. Yep. It's yep. Just tree replacement. Okay. Uh, uh, delete mature. But in the first, um, in the first line of A, yep. there's another. That's where we replace a whole paragraph. Yes, right, right here. That's the paragraph. Um, yeah. Yes. Everybody yes. could just yes. quick read that. Make sure they're comfortable. Yeah. Basically, we're taking out the part that says from from where it says trees enhance air quality. Blah 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 blah. Up to city neighborhoods. Um, we took that out and we replaced it with mostly the wording that David had in the email before. We're talking about the values of trees. So um, trees, basically it's gonna say trees, uh, urban forests provide ecosystem services that benefit all residents, such as mitigating air pollution, lowering ambient temperatures, resulting in reduced energy use for cooling buildings, reducing stormwater runoff volumes and pollutants, reducing erosion and providing habitat to sustain populations of urban wildlife. What they also that? reduce noise, enhance. Oh, enhance, and then it picks up where this left off. Yeah, enhance aesthetic, aesthetics and property value. Yes, yep. Okay. All right. So that's, Molly, the changes we put in are okay. And can I just make a comment about I, the significance of that paragraph? That paragraph reminds us that the planning department's perspective of just using this as a tool for limiting land use sprawl, you know, sprawl in the is is missing the point. Yeah, that's that these why we're services this up. these services are needed. Yep. in the urban center exactly right that's why we worked on that over several meetings yeah good i like it yeah well you, i mean also also i think if we, if we accept these functions then i mean all trees perform these functions not just those that are yeah subject to site plan review right mm -hmm. yeah um exactly and, we're building up <laughs> yeah but, this is like almost i see it as kind of a fail safe like we have to get this in and then we move we start launching our our larger campaign can i just say one thing about that though it means that in every breath that you push this forward you've got to have in the same breath the the um larger agenda of of a universal tree protection ordinance because if you don't they'll think the passage of this is the box that they tick off their list for tree protection. And, and so this is the political like, you know, strategist in me that says, really, you've got to at every opportunity, let them know that this is just a small piece of the larger agenda that you have. Well, it is it is under the whole section of the ordinance that has to do with um, site plan review projects yeah but most trees don't fall under site plan i know exactly yeah. so it's it's by by the fact that it's in this section it's it's confining itself to this very narrow right it's not going to yeah. have that much impact because the projects that require site plan review are not that many 
And that's what you've got to communicate to the counselors and to, you know, everybody yeah. you interact with about this, like, like, don't use up all your political capital just passing this. Yeah, it's just yeah. not enough. No, it's, it's duly squat. Yeah. <laughs> Another front we're pushing on is we we are Rich has been um, leading this forward, but it came out of some meetings with planning is we need to be inventorying how many trees are getting cut down. They have to start doing that. We have to have some kind of a a metric for change over time. Carolyn claims that she has such a spreadsheet. I remember we asked her to. Should we put that in the ordinance itself somewhere that we the part of this whole thing is that trees or I think actually I think it is. I think it is, and she would claim that she has. Yeah, I did see that. She has a spreadsheet. I've seen it, and but the spreadsheet that I'm the data I'm talking about is the by right construction in the A and R plans that that are actually sailed through. That I don't necessarily. I don't see any of them unless a building permit is attached to. That's how I see all this stuff. Is a building permit. And you have to get a trench permit and a new driveway permit for every house that's constructed. So separate of this ordinance, that's how I see um, how the canopy is getting taken apart piece by piece. Yeah. So anyways, so any, right. any, I agree with Lily that, you know, yes, we, we were, we've been working on this for a long period of time. We want to finish it, but we're not done. We will be back and we will be back with um, uh, a lot more commentary. Um, so, um, okay. All right. So okay. I, Molly, just uh, Molly removed mature here. <clears throat> um, Molly removed mature over here. Um, Sue, right here, we're just going to change yep. this to 12. Table, 20s go to 12. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Molly's comment here, Molly removes significance. So any person removing a tree that is subject to the section. Uh, we have changed this part right here to uh, one, uh, no less than uh, one. Yep, I think I got that. I'm gonna put it in order though of my notes. E1A. No less than one, two, one. Okay. Right. Um, Molly has a question here. Question is the city's tree list and planting guidelines included in the rules and regulations regarding subdivisions of land. Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. It refers to regarding subdivision of land. So. No, she's asking if that our tree list and planting guidelines is included in that. Right. And I don't know the answer to that question. Uh huh. Can can find that out. Because this this is saying replacement of trees shall either be approved street tree species as defined in the rules and regulations regarding subdivision of land. So those rules and regulations are those the do those include the city's tree list and planting guidelines? Probably. So I I. I think that they're uh, the list they used to have for uh, regarding subdivisions of land for mm -hmm. tree species um, was abysmal. It was like 10 tree species, half were maple and the other were ash. So that list has been thrown away, I think, but it would be good to find that out because if not, that the city's tree list and planting guidelines should be inserted in, in, this, um, uh, in this paragraph, in this sentence. It is mentioned down in section one below. Yeah, um, but I mean, it's it's it reference it's referenced differently. It says any trees to be retained and any replacement trees on a property with demolition and or construction activity oh, on land. Yeah, et cetera. Um, this specifically talks about um, regulations and subdivision of, regarding subdivision of land. So you could have someone making a new development with a new street. Mm -hmm. Make sure that when they, um, because the city will not accept the street for a period of time, or they may not at all, um, sort of like um, the uh, uh, Emerson Way, which is off of uh, Burke's Fair Road, is not a city street, 
And so they planted like maples everywhere. Oh. Um, that's because it fell into the old subdivision um, tree list. So I, I can look into that. Okay. For myself. Um, okay. Next I'm one. trying to find it in the in the city code, and I'm not. I don't know where it is. Uh, just as Molly removed significant. Molly also removed significant there. Uh, Molly removed significant from there. Molly deleted significant there. And then deleted, um, replaced the term significant tree to tree. So you deleted mature canopy there. And that's the end of the STO. So can, can we circle back to the notion of somehow referencing a, um, a graduated uh, replacement cost similar to a graduated chart similar to what we have for public shade trees? Or the trench permit. Isn't mm -hmm. the trench permit is where we yeah. have that better system? But you have to remember that the way that that operates is that is a regulation. That is, that is a regulation that is governed under the permit system and the regulatory authority of that is the mayor. So the way that we actually, so I, I'm always, I'm always cautious about. See, and I understand why, but I'm, I'm cautious about putting. It's not. There's not often. There's a lot of. Well, there, that's not true. There are dollars and cents inside city ordinances, but if we, and this is, I think, the reason why planning never put um, the dollar number in this ordinance because they wanted the ability to control the dollar amount. Um, sort of like um, yeah. we have our public, um, our public shade tree regulations are by, it's a regulation and we can, we can change the regulation at any given time. Um, when there's new uh, tree protection standards that come available, we don't have to go through an ordinance change to do that. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not, well, I'm not averse to suggesting we do no, that. I, I, I want to be very clear. I'm, I don't think that we should pin ourselves down to any value. Okay, all right. So I, I'm, It's I'm more than regulation it. then. And, 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 you know, because David, to, Molly, Rich, you and I gave so much thought to this two years ago, I'm trying to pull up the language <laughs> that we suggested then um, that, you know, uh, did not fly, but we're in a different, we're, we're in a different place. We you know? evolved. The culture of trees is stronger now. The climate crisis is greater. The, the composition of the city council is different. It's We're in a different place. So um, let me see if I can find that. Could there be some external document that is referred to in this ordinance? That's, that, that was what I was could, trying yeah. to do, Molly. Yeah. It changed. Um, it could change, you know, with inflation or whatever. Thing. Precisely. But, yeah. Precisely. And, and also that could be referenced in this ordinance, plus any other future ones we do, you know, could all refer back to the same. It should be consistent um, replacement value that we use for no matter why the trees are taken out. Yeah. So, I mean, what you would do is you would basically. Um... Sorry. I'm I'm not giving you a headache. Uh, it's okay. So in, in here, in uh, number two, mm -hmm. you can reference, for example, um, a like the city's tree list and planting guidelines, for example. Like that's tree list and planting guidelines is a, is a document that's sort of like a regulation. We we change we change that document as needed. We take species out. We add species. So that's where you would house that kind of information. So you would reference you know pay funds to the city tree replacement fund account um, that is uh, you know codified in the city's tree list and planting guidelines or something of that nature. Yes, not really right, right reading, but and something like that. In the back of that document, you would have um, the replacement um, the replacement scale. Okay, so I found I found the wording. I found the whole document that we worked so long and hard on. Um, 
and uh, I'll just share. So in the, where the sentence says about the half inch caliper, mm -hmm. we cut out that sentence and I'm going to just throw into the chat mm -hmm. the, the sentence that we proposed. Oh, Great. good, Lily. Good, good, good. It's good to have this continuity. Oh, so here. what it is, is so cutting out that half inch caliper sentence per the replacement formula set mm -hmm. forth and regularly updated by the city the dbh of each replacement tree shall equal <laughs> or exceed the dbh of each significant tree to be removed from the lot okay so that states a minimum that's back at the it's per their tree replacement formula. So that's, it's referencing the formula that Rich currently uses for public trees. Yeah. And um, yeah. And, and it really should say, should exceed the, um, the total, more like the, like the total inches of DBH of each significant tree to be removed from the lot. I mean, that's, I'm happy to share this this document that we worked on in let's see February 2020, like right before COVID hit. Um, but uh, uh, you know, yeah, we did so much of this. So you you have to in that sent in that sentence you have to reference something. You'd have to reference a place where that's codified, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because, because you, you wouldn't want to just say that Carolyn and Wayne disappeared tomorrow. We had a new planning exactly. office, right? You'd be like, oh, well, yeah. uh, each, each, DBA, uh, each uh, inch of DBH is worth 10 bucks. We, we just made the rules, you know? You want to have that codified and documented. Uh, as Molly said, you can adjust uh, for inflation or that is, that is outside of the ordinance. Um, where is that now for that trench permit language? That is that is part of uh, that is a part of the package that goes with. If you're working with if you're working uh, if you're uh, working within 50 feet of a public shade tree, I, I get alerted to it, and then I go and inspect the work uh, or I inspect the project, and then if there is a request for, um, you know, then if a request comes for tree removal public shade tree hearing and removal, that's when I break out that public shade tree regulations. Well, so, can, can we refer to that in this document? Uh, Just as far as the, like what the replacement value would be? It seems like we should be consistent. Yeah, I mean, yes, we, we can. I don't think we should refer to that whole document. I think that, but let's put it this way. That whole document, I think, is a really great document to be used for if, if we are able to move and get a citywide ordinance passed to protect trees. But I think we can reference, we can just take that scale and stick it in the city's tree list and planting guidelines as appendices E. Mm -hmm. And that's where you'd reference the cost uh, for a replacement. Okay. Or, or the replacement of, you know, a four and a half inch um, tree is X. You know, I'm just using that. As yeah. So well, it should be. It hey, excuse me, I just have to take off. So um, this is Jen talking. Yeah. All right, Jen, thank you. We still have a quorum. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Jen. Guys. Yeah, thanks for thanks, all Jen. your hard work. Sorry, I got to cut out. It's okay. Okay, bye. 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 Um, I too have to go, folks. I've got my drumming class. One handed that I'm going to do one handed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just had surgery on my hand. Lily, Lily, did you share with us again that document? Because I don't. Um. Yeah. Let me share it with you. Um. So you just, just absolutely. So you kind of look at it and. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Let's see. File share. I haven't opened this in two years. And. Some of us might have access to it. Uh, you do know. already have access to it, but I'm going to go ahead and let's see. I don't think Sue does. And I'm going to just, rem I'm just going to put the link in the chat. Great. Great. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you, Lily. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then I'll make sure that I um, set the sharing so that you all can see it. Have a great flight to Europe. Be well. Thanks. Thanks.
thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks for Thank you, this. Lily, for showing up. Yep. Yeah, definitely. You're You're welcome. so much. It's great. You're welcome. Mm. Um, all right, you all take care. Take okay. Care. So in the sentence that says number two, pay funds to the city mm -hmm. for a tree replacement, if I understand the replacement fund account, that comma, are we suggesting we would take out in the planning board's estimate and refer to an appendix in the... Yeah, some, some, well, no, no, we have to keep it in the planning board's estimate because remember this is a, this is a zoning ordinance, right? We okay. are, we're not responsible for enforcing this. The planning board is. So Got it. Somewhere, somewhere in there, you'd have to craft language um, that would say, uh, will allow the city to plant new, uh, you know, pay funds to the city for a tree replacement fund account. Account. The planning board's estimate will allow the city to plant new shade trees on city property in accordance uh, with accordance with the formulas in the tree list and planting guidelines. According with the formula. Um, city proper in accordance. With the, with the city's tree list and planting guidelines. You know, I see, uh, okay. you know, and then we'd have to name an append, appendices X. Yeah. Something of that nature. I, and I don't know what that would look like at the moment, but, and that gives you the ability to change that part of the document, just like we can change the part. Of, so for example, oh, if the ANSI, if the ANSI A3, uh, A300 standards get updated, you know, we don't have to change the ordinance. We, we just update the city's tree list and planting guidelines because the ANSI standards are a part of that, et cetera. <clears throat> okay. Right. So we're going to, that's a new change that we hadn't talked about. So we have just a couple of new changes. Yeah. No, I mean, I think it's. We're getting there. I think it's all good. Um, Rich, I have a question about meeting in person. Is that is that going to happen? Um, uh, I don't know the answer to that question. I didn't get I one question I didn't ask the mayor. Yeah. I don't because know. I, I actually think that it's no coincidence that everything has slowed down during the pandemic. I think it's hard to work on something this complex remotely. Yep. Yeah. And it, well, would be, I, and it would actually be really valuable to have paper copies distributed of the latest draft of this ordinance. And Sue, yep. thank you for spending all the time doing it. I know it's very time consuming. And Molly. Or Mo and Molly, both of you. Yep. No, I, 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 I totally agree with you, David. I think we, uh, we, seem, we move faster. Things get moved faster when we're in person. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I just put in the chat the relevant section from that document that Lily posted. This, yeah. this is the wording that we have. That we proposed last time. Okay. And that itself was a compromise. All right. Okay. Somehow or another, I need to save the chat because this is part of the public record. Yes, yeah, so you can click on those three dots at the bottom. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Can you see my chat boxes on actually? No. No, we can't okay. see your chat box. But if I click on those three dots. Yeah. Um, on the screen, it says save, click save chat. Yes. Okay. And then it'll save it to a document that you can save. I'm sorry, Molly. Where does the four go? Mitigation. This is this is just this is copied out of that document that Lily gave us a link to. And so this is the wording that we used um, that we can we can pluck from to put into the document that we're working on now. Mm. You got it. Thank you. Okay, so I got to copy that link. In other words, we're using, yeah. Okay, I put it in my notes that I'm taking. But you'll find that in the document as well. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else that you want to go over while we have this open? Um. What happened to the document that Lily gave us for the significant tree ordinance? That never passed. Is that what happened? No, that, that was a working draft that. So uh, 
back in before COVID and when Lily was um, still on the commission. Oh. David, David Lily and I were working with planning and that was our draft. That's right. That was our working draft and we never, we didn't get as far as this. Uh. So. Okay, and then and then planning took it and made their changes to it. Yeah, so the draft is, the draft oh, that cool. David Sue and I worked on um, uh, is the base draft that you see here. And yep. then um, we I went to the Office of Planning and Sustainability, asked them to comment on this. Ah, uh, did and they came back with what we have in front of us. Okay, okay. So, so that, yeah, so, I mean, I think, so what I think we should do, and if Sue or Molly could do this on their own, could you take this document and add those changes to it? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Yep. You're welcome. And then we can revisit this at our next meeting because I would like to have the input of the other two commissioners that are not, we're not able to be present. Yep. Yeah. Um, Sue, that, that, Paragraph on mitigation that I put in the chat. Mm -hmm. It's at the bottom of page six in that document. Okay. Yeah, I have that document open now. Okay. Can I can I stop screen sharing? Are you good? Yeah. Okay. Deb, thank you. You're a trooper. I know you're back there somewhere. I hope you're not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we didn't ask her if she could stay after six. I know, I didn't even think about that. I'm sorry. Sorry, Deb. Deb. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, and, and just, uh, um, all right, so I'm, I mean, I, okay. I, I, there's two other agenda items we didn't get to, but I'm assuming we're just gonna drop those for now and we'll end up with this meeting. So what's, the, what's the, the next steps on this STO? Are you gonna, um, Sue's going to put the revisions in, send it to you, then you're going to run it by the other no, um, commissioners. What gonna, no, what I'm going to do is we're going to, Sue's going to put it together for us and send it to us all. Okay. None of us are going to respond to her. Yep. We're just going to read it and we're going to save our comments and questions for our next meeting. Okay. And that'll be the last absolute one where we're going to say yes. I, I, yes, I would love to believe that, Molly, but I don't think that is going to be <laughs> the answer. David's laughing. I'm just, I'm just, I don't want to set you up for failure. Okay. But yes, I, that would be beautiful if they would just say, sure, we love it. And here it is. So, okay. Um, All right. Thank you, thank you for hanging in there, Molly, and Sue. So patiently. I mean, Thank you, David. And Rich. I mean, it's just a, what a process. Yeah. <laughs> really? Well, I mean, you know, if you, if you think about this, all we've worked on really since we've been on Zoom is like legislation. We've worked on a lot of legislation via Zoom. Yeah. Um, and it's also not just been regular meetings. You know, David, Sue, and I met, I right. think, before mm -hmm. times as a subgroup to work on this. So well, we, we did the, Carolyn. We did the planting site survey. We got out in the field and did yes. some. We did, but I'm just saying the part, the legislation part of it, we've worked, uh, like David has said, we worked online. Yeah. Through Zoom, and it's it's kind of complicated. It's crazy. Yeah. What yeah. document are you talking about? And what page? And, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. It, it's hard with with interruptions to get back your mind. It takes us 15 minutes to get our minds like, what are we talking about? Right. But <laughs> just remember, everybody, we've done so much other stuff, too. There's a lot of pruning has gone on this winter um, we had a spectacular fall planting season we've we've really done a lot and now we have this incredible new relationship with the rotary and mm -hmm. david's work with the principal and berkshire design and yeah that's true. he's been doing our tree city usa application got put in yeah. yep we do a lot we, we do do a lot we do, we yeah. do a lot so all right so without further ado, if no one else has anything else and there's no one, nothing else, uh, there's nothing else anticipated by the chair, is there anything else that you would like to add to the meeting? If there isn't, I will surely entertain a motion to adjourn. And I will. I'll second. Uh, we're, we're get in the screen. Okay, Molly. Molly. I don't know, Dave. I move to adjourn. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will second that. And I am. No discussion. I think we're all good. And yeah. We can be, um... <laughs>
done until our next meeting, which will be on the 16th. Okay. Deb, so sorry. I didn't even ask you about staying late. No problem. I'm here. Don't worry about it. Thanks, meeting everybody. Is, meeting is adjourned.